Hi, it's Dominic from the MSGuy.com. I wanted to talk to you today about vaccines and oculizumab, specifically the COVID-19 vaccine. Let me just say this before I get going. I'm not a doctor. I can kind of interpret some of the science. I ask the questions, I listen to things, I read. This is not a position, this is just me wondering, especially from a patient point of view. I'm on Oculizumab, I've been on it for a couple of years now, and I would liken it to using a very powerful weed killer. And every six months you just put the weed killer on, and it's really, really effective at uh, reducing MS relapses, reducing lesion activity. I gather all this stuff from the science. I certainly find it great. It's easy to take, and uh, I don't have many MS problems, and I've had MS for 28 years now, but, I had my oculizumab infusion. Then I had a COVID-19 vaccine. And I've agitated a bit because I, from what I was reading and hearing and um, they've tested my antibodies. Zero. I have zero COVID antibodies. But what it does mean is that I have to continue living my life as if I'm in lockdown because COVID-19 vaccines just don't work for me. They don't work for anybody on Oculizumab, I gather. This is very early days. It is a lot of unknowns. I'm thinking about this from the, what does this mean for my life as an MS patient regarding how I'm treated? And I guess where I'm going is, I want to be able to have my MS treated and have a vaccine be effective on me. There's no certain ways of how this can or is going to be done that if you are on oculizumab, you will need to come off it for a while to let your immune system reconstitute. They call it naive B cells and they're the sort of poking their head. It, if we use the weed killer analogy, it's the first tiny shoots of grass. But there's got to be a certain amount of grass on the playing field before that vaccine can interact with it and create immunity or a certain amount of immunity for me and then a booster can sort of give that a kick at the backside and get it going even better. Right now, uh, my lymphocytes are zero. Oculizumab is in theory dosed every six months regardless. However, there is a growing uh, school of thought that come the six months, rather than just redosing religiously because it says so, do a lymphocyte panel, a test on B cells to see if there's any there. Because if there are none, why keep spraying the field with weed killer? It doesn't need it. There aren't any. And I'm really struggling with this because I want to get my thoughts absolutely right. And this is not designed to alarm anybody. I'm just trying to highlight a potential issue for the future. And what that issue is, I think, is I don't want to be any longer than I have to be kept as if I'm in lockdown when everybody else in the rest of the world can start coming out of lockdown because they have vaccines that work for them. It's not that the vaccines don't work, it's that the oculizumab makes it, and this is an unforeseen consequence. The oculizumab makes it so that the vaccine does not work, essentially. I guess it's the same for flu jabs and things like this that I've been religiously taking. I do know that before I started my vaccine in Oxford, they were very keen that I got completely up to date with everything, which wasn't the case for everybody. And I gather from uh, a neurologist at Oxford that their protocol, because I think their kind of sense there may have been an issue, is going to be adopted nationwide, well, according to him. But that would mean many more people who go onto Oculizumab getting a ton of jabs first. I was like a human dartboard. But let's come back to this. We didn't know this was gonna happen. Nobody knew this was gonna happen. It's not anybody's fault. But what I want to do is engage with my neurologist and talk about a strategy, how I can in the shortest possible time, how can I normalize myself like other people, I suppose? And I only see a couple of options, because if I come off my oculizumab for, say, six months, and my B cells are zero, and they need them to be, for argument's sake, uh, three out of 10, before 10 being normal, before a vaccine works, maybe that's another couple of months, maybe that's eight months, maybe that's nine months, maybe that's a year, who knows, without treating my MS in order for an COVID-19 vaccine to work. 
then I had the vaccine, then I had the booster. And then let's pretend I go straight back onto Ocalizumab, think, you know, that was uh, six months without. Then I need a booster. Then I need to stay off the Ocalizumab for another, ooh, call it 12 months. This could cause endless problems because it's likely that we're going to need booster vaccines as variants develop, a bit like the flu. That changes every year. So it's a tough one. It makes me wonder. There's two options that I see as an inexpert patient who can just read, and that is cladribine, Mavenclad, doesn't seem to affect the vaccines. That's also a highly efficacious MS medication. Onkeluzumab is my fourth medication. I don't want to be a, um, uh, a drug tart, shall we say. There's no way that I would go on to cladribine if this wasn't an issue. But I think that's definitely something that I would like to have a serious conversation the neurologist about because cladribine doesn't affect the vaccine response it's a highly efficacious ms med and i just want to get on with life i don't want to live in my ms i just want to have the jab create immunity and worry about other things like being run down by a bus or whatever the normal worries for death are uh you know to normalize the risks as much as possible for me Presently, I will have to keep treating everybody like they are um, radioactive, uh, wear a mask. Uh, I have a five layer mask and then I have additional charcoal filters because frankly, I'm not going to die because somebody else can't be bothered to adequately protect everybody else because that's probably why we wear masks is to protect other people. Um, or I know nothing about ofatumumab and it's too soon to tell. Ofatumumab has just received a license in Europe and the UK. Uh, it's not even prescribable in the UK yet. I think there's something else you have to sort of cross nice hurdles, which is the National Institute for Clinical Excellence, which is different from the uh, actual licensing of the drug. But regardless, it's a once a month injection, B cell depleter. Does that mean that the time off the drug would be shorter before my B cells repopulated and I could have a vaccine, I could have the second one. Maybe I go, should we say, unprotected from my MS for a couple, three months, who knows? Uh, as opposed to eight to 12 to 18, I don't know what it would be now that I'm a sort of uh, uh, fully bedded in Oculuzumab user. How long will it take my immune system to reconstitute to the stage where it would take a vaccine? Then which will mean not having my regular dosing schedule. It's all a bit complex. It's just something that's coming up and I'm starting to wonder, perhaps ofatumumab might be an answer. Who knows? Perhaps cladribine may be an answer. Who knows? But it looks like, sadly, because it was really convenient, uh, that uh, ocalizumab may not be the answer in the context of vaccination against COVID-19. So that was all. Um, it's really to me a patient issue as ever because it's about allowing patients to conduct as normal a life as possible. Perhaps somebody doesn't want to change from ocalizumab. Great, knock yourself out. I don't mind. It's not an appeal for people to change. It's not an anti-Roche uh, Genentech thing. It is unforeseen, but it stands to affect how I would be able to live my life especially given that all those around me are getting vaccinated and creating antibodies and being able to resume a somewhat more normal life. Uh, I don't want to be living thinking that I'm relying on herd immunity, which may not happen because vaccines, right now we know that they reduce hugely your chances of being affected by COVID-19. As far as I'm aware, there is no evidence about them reducing the transmission of COVID-19 between people. So in theory, somebody with uh, a vaccinated status could pick up COVID-19, it doesn't affect them, but they could give it to me who is unvaccinated, for example. Now, I don't know, it's not super cheery news, but I'm not really pissed off on the other hand. I just want to see a way out of this and I want my neurologists, I want everyone's neurologists to be thinking about how they can approach the drug that people are on regarding the going forward making antibodies being receptive to vaccines, quite possibly the annual boosters uh, that will be required. Um, and I'm really struggling to see how this could work with ocalizumab. So mm, a, bit of a bit of a downer because I thought I was sorted uh, on that. And that was, I'm 52, I thought it was going to carry me forward for quite some time. 
but maybe Mavenclad. I've got a 70 year old friend and they're starting on Mavenclad very soon. Uh, I know other people on Mavenclad. I'm not sure why it isn't as widely used uh, from what I understand. There's nothing medically that sort of puts it into the ooh, ooh oh, that's a little bit dodgy sense. Right now at Mavenclad, possibly off a of Tumu Mab, not entirely sure what. I would close myself away from people for a year and have stem cells, but uh, that's my view on risk. Doctors don't seem to be uh, as engaged with um, stem cells, um, which is which is kind of a shame because myself and I know several other guys I can think of off the top of my head uh, that would have stem cells in a flash and accept the sort of one year out at least setback that that would mean to them and all the things that come with it regarding um, being safe and careful. But stem cells right now, who knows, maybe in uh, 10 years time, maybe in Star Trek time, I don't know, they'll be normal. But uh, right now, it, they seem to be quite out of reach. So I'm looking at other ways that I can carry my life forward whilst treating my MS or having my MS treated. If you like these videos, I really would urge you to subscribe to the channel. This is not a commercial enterprise. It's just my way of finding out who likes this stuff, who follows this stuff, um, if it's even hitting the mark. So uh, like and subscribe and share and all those things. And uh, you can find the buttons in the various places up and down and you can make comments and give thumbs up and all that good stuff. But until next time, which hopefully won't be long, I hope you guys stay well, take care, have a lovely day. Bye-bye.